It began with a tremendous shaking, unlike anything in living memory. Then came the water, destroying everything in its path. And afterwards, the devastation. Whole towns washed off the map. This is the same place today, what used to be the city of Rikuzen Takata. Five years on, the Wakasugi family is trying to find the spot their house used to stand. When we first met them five years ago, Sayaka and Takuma were still full of hope their father would be found alive. This year, Sayaka wrote her first essay on dealing with his death. I lost my father in tsunami. So many lives were lost in our town. Each one is important. I think it is our duty as the survivors to tell the world how dear life is. But it's clear from Takuma there is still a lot of suppressed trauma here. If we talk about it, I feel down. So I avoid talking about it. I sometimes want to know what my friends went through. But I don't ask because I'm worried that I may not be able to help them. When the tsunami waves swept in here, nearly 2,000 people were killed in this one small town. That's nearly 10% of the population. The trauma has been immense. Any government's first duty is to protect its people. And so it's perhaps not surprising that this has been the response. Massive new walls like this one are being built along 400 kilometers of coastline. The towns will be rebuilt on higher ground, away from the coast. But first, new land must be created. It is a vast operation and it is slow. Five years on, Yumura is still waiting to find out where her new house can be built. I sometimes think we'd be much better off if we'd left here after the tsunami and started a new life somewhere else, she says. We've waited so long to rebuild our lives. In what used to be their front garden, Sayaka and Takuma have found a little pine sapling. They decide to dig it up so they can plant it at their new house. A small sign of new life in the midst of the devastation. Rupert Wingfield Hayes, BBC News, in Rikuzen Takata, Japan.